Today on Know the Truth, Philip DeCourcy teaches us to be tech savvy. We may be digital natives, but we don't need to be digitally naive. We have got to think theologically. We have got to behave biblically. The Christian walk is not a walk in the park. It's a dance through a moral minefield. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube offer lots of great content. These socials even help promote the ministry of Know the Truth. But social media has a dark side, promoting pride and encouraging us to seek approval from cyber friends and strangers. Today, pastor and Bible teacher Philip DeCourcy is examining why social sites are driving people to dangerous levels of comparison. We're looking at digital technology through the lens of biblical theology in a message titled Tech Savvy Part 3. You can listen online at ktt.org. Here's Philip. Well, I invite you to take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 12. We're looking at a biblical worldview of technology. We're trying to bring our theology to bear upon our technology. And Paul encourages us to do that. He encourages us to not allow the world to squeeze us into its image but to always look at things with a renewed mind, a Bible-informed theological perspective on life. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, we have looked at this issue under several kind of headings. We've said that technology is a question of thanks. Technology is a question of time. Technology is a question of triviality. Technology is a question of truth. And where we're picking up is this. It's a technology and a question of temptation. A question of temptation. You see, we live in a world that's not morally neutral. We live in a world that is morally biased. This is a world in rebellion against God. Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans that man is at enmity with God. He tells us here in the passage we just read, don't allow the mindset of the world, the philosophy raised up against God, the way of living and thinking divorced from the glory of God and the will of God, don't allow that world to squeeze you into its mold fight, push back, okay? The Christian walk is not a walk in the park. It's a dance through a moral minefield. Wasn't it A.W. Tozer who said this world is not a playground, it is a battleground? And if that's true, that's true of technology. While technology on the one hand is a question of thanks, on the other hand, it's a question of temptation. It's got upsides, and it's got downsides. Temptation is coming to all men. That means the phone in your hand, the tablet on your lap, and the computer at home is a temptation. It's a common temptation. And remember that there's not only a tempter who is constantly tempting those in the world with the world. You and I are battling with our flesh to which the world appeals, sponsored by Satan. James 1 verses 13 to 15, you know what? God tempts no man, but we are tempted when we are drawn away of our own desires. So we need to be aware of the temptations that will come to us in the digital world. We need to be alert. Here's the temptations. I'm going to look at three of them. The temptation of self-promotion. The temptation of self-promotion. Now remember, self-promotion is antithetical to the gospel. The gospel teaches us to humble ourselves. The gospel teaches us to deny ourselves. The gospel teaches us to have a proper measure of ourselves. Man is a lover of self, according to 2 Timothy 3. Not a lover of God, a lover of self. 
and a lover of pleasure. And if the world is in charge of the digital world, then that's dangerous. It's antithetical to the gospel. Jesus was equal with God, but he didn't hold on to that. He humbled himself, made himself nothing, added humanity to his deity, came in the likeness of man in the form of a servant, became obedient under the death of the cross, humility and humiliation and horror. And that's taught in a context where Paul says to the Philippians, don't be marked by self-conceit or self-ambition, but I want you to prefer others more than yourself. You know what the Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 2? Let others praise you. We're certainly not saying that someone shouldn't be appreciated and achievements shouldn't be celebrated and gifts shouldn't be rewarded. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is, do you recognize that's from God and therefore you glorify Him? Do you recognize that, you know what, that doesn't lead to pride but to humility because it's all a matter of grace? And do you remember what the proverb says? Let others praise you. Don't blow your own trumpet. Let others do that. And remember 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7, that what you have you received. I don't know if there's leaves much to build on in terms of self-promotion, self-exaltation. Look at me. Be honest about yourself. Have a proper estimation of yourself, right? Romans 12, verse 3. Don't think too highly of yourself, says Paul. But, you know, have a proper estimation of your giftedness and and your place within the body. Don't try and be something you're not. Don't try and be another person. Accept yourself for who you are in Christ and develop yourself in relation to Christ so that you take on His image and you promote Him. And you crucify yourself on the cross. It's powerful. You know, more people are dying than ever before taking selfies. The numbers are climbing of people who are looking for that selfie on the edge of a building, on the edge of a canyon, on a massive bridge or something, so that it attracts attention. It's something no one has seen before, and so they want to look at it, and looking at it, they look at you. People are dying, literally dying have fallen into the Grand Canyon, have fallen off skyscrapers to get that selfie. There's nothing evil about taking a photo of yourself, but the motive becomes evil, and the end can become evil. And at least in those deaths, we have a metaphor that absorption with self can blind you to the dangers around you. Those people become so absorbed with themselves that they forgot they were stepping back off a cliff or on the edge of danger. It's a good metaphor. Here's another temptation, the temptation to seek human approval. The temptation to seek human approval. It's kind of the flip side of the point I just made, so I'll try and move through it a little bit quicker. But the digital world, the world of Twitter and Facebook and the different platforms that are available for you and I to present ourselves and promote ourselves, it involves an unhealthy desire to be liked okay? Liked. I mean, look, look at every YouTube, look at every Twitter feed, look at every Facebook posting, and you get the thumbs up and the thumbs down. That's the world in which we're living. Listen to this word from a former Instagram model by the name of Asena O'Neill. She's very honest. She left the, the social media world and Instagram, and here's what she said. Social media, as the current system of numbers and money dictates, is not genuine life. It's purely contrived images. It's edited clips ranked against each other. It's a system based on social approval, likes and dislikes, validation and views, success and followers. It's purely and perfectly orchestrated judgment. Think about that. That's a model on Instagram. And she's admitting it's about personality by numbers. It's about approval by consensus. It's scary. And we can all fall into that trap, that unhealthy desire to be approved and accepted by others, to measure our self-worth, to consider identity in relation to others like us or love us or to the contrary. Remember David fell into that trap? We won't go there. Write it down if you're taking notes. 2 Samuel 24, and we have got 1 Chronicles 21. And in those 
passages, you have the story of David taking a census of the armies of Israel, the number of troops at his disposal. And God censored him for the census. It wasn't because counting troops is a sin. David did it to feel better about himself, to promote himself, to give him a sense of importance, and also less dependence upon God. He put greater trust in his army, given the increased numbers, perhaps. And it's the same with us. It's the same with anyone. We want to be approved, and we want to be accepted. We want to gauge our self-worth and our identity gets wrapped up in clicks and likes and what others think about us. But again, that's not biblical. Again, and if I have to say it, I'll just say it. I'm not saying it's not right to want to feel part of something, if that's what acceptance means. We're made to be social beings. What others think of us is important. And when it's right and in the right place, that's a good thing. I, I want to know what my parents think of me, what my wife thinks of me, what my daughters think of me, what you think of me. But I'm not going to find my identity there. I'm not going to lose my joy if I fall in someone's eyes. Because you see, as a Christian, fundamentally, I use the word fundamentally, proportionately, my identity is in Christ. My sense of self-worth comes from being made in His image. My sense of value comes from the fact that God sets His love on me, and I'm the apple of His eye, and He was willing to give up His own Son to purchase my never-dying soul. That's the stuff of identity and value and estimation. It comes from the God side of things, not the human side of things. And the world in which we live is a world that's geared for judgment based on numbers and likes and social acceptance. I mean, let's waken up, folks. Young people are killing themselves. Instagram models and influencers are killing themselves when they're not liked, when they're not approved. Their whole lives are bound up in this stuff. And when the meter starts going down in the wrong direction, they don't know who they are. They don't know why they're here. It's tragic. It breaks my heart. It should burden our souls. And as parents and as believers, we should be alert to this with our young people and with our friends. We've got to give them a, a self-image and a sense of identity related to the gospel and the creation but that's not the world of the digital world, and you know it. So fight this temptation for self-promotion. Fight this temptation for human approval. Remember Ephesians 1 verse 6, we're accepted in the beloved. What a beautiful phrase, accepted in Jesus Christ. Remember what Paul said in Galatians 1 verse 10, if I was the servant of Christ, I wouldn't seek the approval of man. He tells us that, right? He says, I didn't seek man's approval because if I did that, I wouldn't be the servant of Christ. I won't be able to preach the gospel. I won't be able to fulfill the will of God. I won't be able to complete my mission if I'm beholding to society and people's approval of me or the religious leader's acceptance of me. No, the servant of Christ doesn't care when that is in opposition to the glory of God and the kingdom of Christ. Well, our acceptance is in Christ. We don't seek human approval. In fact, it's a small thing. 1 Corinthians 4, 3 to 4, what does Paul say? It's a small thing that I should be judged by you. He's speaking to the Corinthians. It's not that he doesn't care about what they think, but if they're judging him, if they're judging the quality of his ministry when his conscience is clear, it's a small thing to him that they should judge him. And it should be a small thing to us. If we're in Christ, loved by the Father, remade in the image of the Son. It's a small thing that the world doesn't like us, doesn't approve us. If someone unfriends you, haven't you got the friendship of Jesus Christ, my friend? If you go to Romans 2, verses 6 to 11, we're also told that we await the final approval. We're not looking for approval now. We're waiting for it. I'm not looking for it on the internet. I don't need it from this culture or my peers. Listen to what Paul says, speaking about judgment that's coming. Eternal life will come to those who by patience and continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. Our approval is going to come at the judgment. 
We're seeking for the glory and the honor that comes when Jesus comes in glory and honor. I love what Tony Runke says in his book, 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You. Here's what he says. Such a desire will kill us spiritually. Speaking about approval. Such a desire will kill us spiritually. And Paul signaled why. In God's economy, approval is something we must wait for. Those who feed on little nibbles of immediate approval from man will eternally starve. Listen to that, young people. Are you seeking little nibbles that come in likes on your Instagram or your Facebook? Are you seeking little nibbles of human approval? Or are you seeking eternal glory and honor and immortality? Love the story of G. Campbell Morgan. He applied for the Methodist ministry in 1888. He had passed the test theologically. He was then to do a trial sermon in this large auditorium before three ministers and 75 people just as happened to come and listen. And he, he laid a goose egg. He bombed out. It was flat. It was not good. He got a rejection slip. He wrote to his father. In fact, he wired his father, telegrammed his father, one word, rejected. And in short shrift, his father wired back, rejected on earth, accepted in heaven, love dad. It's beautiful, isn't it? Rejected on earth, accepted in heaven. Last temptation, no time's gone, but I've got to fit this in. This is where I finished in first service. Temptation to covetousness and envy. I'll try and collapse this. The World Wide Web is one big shop window. It's the largest mall in the world. And it's always baiting us and tempting us with stuff. It wants stuff to define our lives. The cut of our clothes, the brand we were, the things we have. Do we have iPhone 8, 9, or 10, or whatever it is now. Maybe it's up to 25. I have no idea. But here's the issue. You get the point. It's always appealing to our flesh. Our desires is trying to inflame our desires for more. Now, more of the world, not more of God, more of the world and the passing fashions of this world. It's continually reminding us what we don't have, what we can have, what we wish we had, and what others have more than us. Frankly, it decreases contentment and it increases covetousness. It has us going in the wrong direction because the Bible wants us to increase contentment and decrease covetousness. And I could give you examples and quotes I have. I'm just going to trust that you buy this point, that every mall and every visit to the World Wide Web, which is the world's largest mall, it all conspires to tempt us with envy and covetousness. It pours gasoline on the sin of covetousness more than at any other time in history. It's in our homes. We can't escape it. It's on the end of our hands. We can't escape it. It's inviting us to go after stuff. It's inviting us to define our lives by the things we possess. The very phone itself is that. It's a thing that's defining our lives regarding possessions just like it. Scary. And it appeals to the eye, which is the seat of covetousness. Remember how Eve looked at the forbidden fruit in the tree in the center of the garden, and she knew it wasn't for her, but she kept looking, she kept lingering, because it was pleasant to her eyes, and then she took it. The spectacle of the world and the things of the world, which is antithetical to the love of the Father. It's in our phone. It's in our tablet. It's on our home computer. It's on the television screen. You get the point. You've got to fight that. Can I give you a few things just quickly? Remember, covetousness is forbidden. It's a sin. It's a grievous act of lawlessness and treachery. Exodus 20, 17, don't covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's house or your neighbor's servant. It's the mark of the unregenerate, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. 
You and I have got to resist comparing ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12, Paul says that. He says, I'm not going to compare myself with you or with anyone else because, you see, the Corinthians were always comparing, and it led to division, and it led to a lifestyle that wasn't like Christ and lovelessness. He says, I'm not doing that, but we do it. And the digital world does it all the time, where it has us comparing ourselves with others, where it tempts us to say, I want what they have, and it looks like I can get it if I'll do this. And sometimes we hurt ourselves, according to 1 Timothy 6, by going after riches. We've got to promote godly contentment because godliness with contentment is great gain, isn't it? 1 Timothy 6. And we must remember that God is enough. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In that whole passage on riches in 1 Timothy 6, Paul says, don't trust on certain riches and lay hold of eternal life. Father, thank you for our time in the Word. Thank you for the reminder of bringing theology to technology. We pray indeed that we would renew our minds, that we would fight the temptation to promote oneself, to take an exaggerated look at self and love of self. Help us to fight the temptation to find our approval in culture, our friends, or our peer group, or our school group. Help us to find our identity in Christ and our worth in our creation by the Creator. Lord, help us to fight covetousness The world is constantly trying to make us dissatisfied. We realize that the eye of man is never satisfied, and we have tools and technology in our hand that baits the eye, which is never satisfied, which means if that's the path we take, we'll never be content. But we thank you for what we have in Christ and what will never be taken away because it's eternally secure. We thank you all this and Jesus too. These things we pray in his name. Amen. Yes, amen. You're listening to Philip DeCourcy on Know the Truth. All the messages in this Tech Savvy series are available online at ktt.org. And Philip will be back in a moment. At Know the Truth, it's our mission to proclaim God's truth so men and women can live in the freedom and hope that Christ provides. But like so many other ministries, we depend on our listeners. It's your gifts that make Know the Truth possible. So would you give today? You can call 888-644-8811 or give online at ktt.org. And to thank you for your gift, we'll send you a book called God, Technology, and the Christian Life. Many Christians are perplexed about modern technology. Digital currency, self-driving cars, genetic engineering prove that human innovation is not slowing down. And as technologies multiply and life becomes more complex, the questions become more stark. This book will help believers answer these questions in a clear and biblical manner. Request your copy today. Call 888-644-8811 or visit ktt.org. Now to tell you about another exciting resource, here again is Philip. If you long for a deeper faith, this brand new devotional, So True, offers you timeless truths from God's Word in a creative and engaging way. These bite-sized segments not only provide readers with accessible theology, but also meaningful stories to illustrate how Scripture applies to their everyday lives. In it, I will encourage believers through challenging insight backed by ample Scripture to make the seeking of God's kingdom a priority. Psalm 1 tells us to meditate on God's Word day and night. Paul's letter to the Corinthians tells us to bring every thought into captivity. I think these devotionals will help you meditate on God's Word and bring your thinking into conformity to Jesus Christ. And you'll find it online at ktt.org. Thank you, Philip. I'm Wayne Shepherd. Join us tomorrow when Philip DeCourcy continues his series on pursuing a Christian mind in the digital age. That's Thursday on Know the Truth. Today's program was produced and sponsored by Know the Truth Incorporated. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.